Today, I want to share with you all the things that I learned while researching how the backend of Instagram works. Between blog posts, podcasts, and conference videos, I have been able to form a good picture of how their backend looks like, how it evolved over the years, what technologies they use, how they fixed their Justin Bieber problem, as well as the tricks they used to make people believe their app was faster than it actually was. When Instagram launched, their original backend architecture was shockingly simple. It was a single server, not even hosted in AWS, running the Django web framework and a PostgreSQL database. The default mistake many startups make, according to Kevin Systrom, Instagram's co-founder, is that they worry way too much about scaling way too early, and they forget about making something that people like. But generally, all that matters is product market fit. That's all that matters. People like your product. Do not worry about when 50,000 people use your product because you will be happy that you have that problem when you get there. We should take notes here. Many of us postponed building what we always wanted to because we think we need to first master Docker, Kubernetes, and AWS, and more. When in reality, launching something imperfect is better than never launching at all. Instagram eventually migrated from a single server to AWS, but the stack of Python, Django, and Postgres lasted through 50 million users according to Kevin. Something that is pretty cool is how Kevin optimized the app to make it all feel faster, even if the servers weren't so fast. Kevin knew that the process to upload a photo had to be as smooth and fast as possible, but uploading files to a server can sometimes take a long time. So Kevin decided to hide the latency or loading states as much as he could. To hide the latency, after the user took a photo and before the user wrote a caption or pressed the post button, the photo will be uploaded to Instagram's servers behind the scenes or in the background. This meant that by the time the user was done writing the caption and hashtags, the photo file was already in the server. So when the user pressed post, the upload process felt almost instant, since the photo file was already uploaded and saving the caption will take no time. And if the user cancelled the upload, the photo will be deleted later. In the first year, Instagram grew to 14 million users. So they moved from the single server they launched on to a better architecture in AWS. And they did this with only three engineers. They wrote a blog post describing exactly what they used and how it all works, so let's take a look. When the user opens the app and sends a request to the server, the first thing that will meet the request will be an Amazon's Elastic Load Balancer that is in front of three servers running Nginx. The job of the Load Balancer is to find an Nginx server that is healthy and redirect the request to it. Then Nginx will take a request from the user and forward it to an application server where Python and Django are running. At 14 million users, Instagram had 25 application servers running in parallel, and when they needed more performance, they could just add more servers to the group. The data was still stored in PostgreSQL, but instead of putting it all in one database, they sharded it. When you shard a database, you divide or partition the database into smaller pieces to better distribute the load. Instagram's main shard consisted in 12 quadruple extra large memory servers, and they replicated or copied that same shard of 12 servers to another zone. But if you take your database and copy it somewhere else, you now have to think how you're going to keep the data between these two databases in sync. One way to keep them in sync is using a master replica setup, which is what Instagram did. A simple master and replica setup consists on the two databases both giving information to the user. This means performing read operations. But when the user wants to add, delete, or update the data, that operation will only happen in the master database and not in the replica. If the write operation is successful, the master will then send the new data to the replica database to bring its copy of the data up to date. They also use Redis, which is an open source in memory key value database to power the main feed, activity feed, and session system. The Redis database is also sharded and just like PostgreSQL, it also has replicas and uses the master replica pattern. Both Redis and PostgreSQL were backed up using Amazon's Elastic Block Store. To cache database queries, they used Memcached. Memcached is a memory cache that holds the most common responses and queries from the database, so that if many people request the same thing, instead of making the database go and look for that thing over and over again, we can instead return the the previous response that is already in the cache. This is how a simple cache would work, for example. If the user requests a photo, we first check if the photo is in the cache. And if it is, we just get the photo from the cache and give it to the user. Else, if the photo is not in the cache, we get the photo data from the database. We put the photo data in the cache for the next time somebody asks for it, and then we give the data to the user. The image upload process also changed, where before the image was uploaded from the phone of the user to Instagram's servers, it is now uploaded to AWS S3 directly. This means 
that Instagram servers generate a secure upload URL. Give that URL to the phone of the user and with that URL, the phone of the user can upload the photo to S3 directly. This is much better than having the user upload the photo to Instagram servers and then the servers having to upload that photo to S3, which will cost more money to Instagram since they will have to pay for the incoming bandwidth of the user uploading the photo and the outgoing bandwidth of uploading the photo to S3. And finally, for monitoring the health of the application, they use Munin to get metrics across all the system. They use Pingdom to monitor the public facing services, PagerDuty for handling incident responses, and for Python and Django error reporting, they use Sentry. As Instagram got more popular and celebrities started to join, they began to have a Justin Bieber problem. Because Justin Bieber had so many followers, every time he would post a new photo, Instagram would either crash or become super slow. And that was because of how Instagram was counting the number of likes the photos got. What you would normally do if you wanted to implement this photo like feature is that you would have two database tables. In one table, you would have all the photos and in another, you would save all the likes. The photos table will hold the information about the photo and all the likes table would hold is the ID of a user and the ID of the photo they liked. Thanks to this approach, we can know which user liked a photo and when, which will help you when the user wants to dislike a photo or see all the photos they like. And to know the number of likes the photo with the ID number one has, for example, all we have to do is go to the likes table and count how many rows have their photo ID column set to the number one. In most cases, you will be fine with this approach. But in the case of Instagram, since Justin Bieber had so many followers, that meant that when showing his newest photo in every single one of his followers' timeline, the count query had to run for every single person that saw that photo. And as more people liked the photo, the count query took longer to finish because there were more and more likes to count. To fix this problem, Instagram denormalized the counter, which means that instead of performing a count query, and actually count each like in the likes table, they ended up adding a new column to the photos table to store the total number of likes. They were still creating a like record in the database because it is important to know who liked what. But instead of counting hundreds of thousands of likes on every photo, they just kept a single counter in the photos table. This way, when someone liked a photo, they just did counter plus one. And when someone disliked it, they did counter minus one. There isn't much online about Instagram's architecture after they were acquired by Facebook now Meta. What is known is that they moved away from AWS and into Meta's data center. And now they handle more than 46,000 posts per minute. I also read that now they use a database for the social graph created by Facebook called Tao, which stands for the associations and objects, capable of handling over a billion read requests and millions of write requests every second. In Tao, data is modeled around objects, like users, photos, or comments, and associations, which are relationships between objects, like a user likes a photo or a user follows another user. And apart from being used at Instagram, it also powers the newsfeed and more services at Facebook. They also released Cinder, which is Meta's internal performance-oriented version of C. Python, the interpreter for the Python programming language. I hope you enjoy these kind of deep dives into the backends of some of the biggest websites in the world. If you do, comment down below what company you would like me to look into next. If you found this video useful, please like it, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel. Thank you as always for watching. Until now, see you on the next one. Down the bio. Bye bye.